Всем привет! Добро пожаловать на этот лайв-стрим. Вы знаете, что вы хардкор-русский литературный фан. Если вы смотрите на лайв-стрим на Friday, мы поговорим о одном из моих любимых авторов – Гоголь. Я думаю, что Гоголь просто все вокруг. Я могу читать его книги, они просто потрясающие. И сегодня, на самом деле, его день рождения тоже. Uh, in honor of Gogol, I moved the day to be later on the week, so it could be on his actual birthday. So, interesting thing about Nikolai Gogol. We're going to talk about Nikolai Vasilievich Gogol. Um, so, right now, there's a little bit of a controversy about whether he is a Ukrainian author or a Russian author. <clears throat> so, uh, and you can let me know, what's your opinion? Is he a Ukrainian author or is he a Russian author? because the Ukrainians have a little bit of a problem with him because he only wrote in Russian, but he very much identified as a Ukrainian. And in fact, a lot of the books and the stories that he wrote were really, you know, depicting Ukrainian culture. Uh, but he only wrote in Russian because that's what the market was at the time. There was more of a market for, you know, he was going to be able to sell more books if he wrote in Russian. So what I think is interesting, and then so Russians now are kind of just trying to decide, do we, you know, do we call Nikolai Gogol a Russian writer? Because, yeah, he did write in Russian. Again, controversy. Sometimes some of the Ukrainians claim them as his own. Some of the Russians claim them as his own. I'm going to say that he's Ukrainian because he thought of himself as a Ukrainian. He was a very proud Ukrainian of Kazakh descent. Um, and again, he very much identified with Ukrainian culture. He just wrote in Russian, because that was the lingua franca of the Russian Empire. So Nikolai Gogol was born on March 31st, 1809. That's, of course, according to the to our calendar. Um, and today's work, as I sat down and started to put together all the different things that I wanted to talk about on this live stream, I ended up with probably like 50 pages <laughs> of Gogol quotes that I wanted to talk about, and we just don't have enough time for that. So I just actually chose my favorite of all of Gogol's short stories and books, and that is Chinel, Chinel. So it's all, often translated into English as the overcoat. And it's a very, I love to have students read this book because it's very interesting to read this from the Western mentality and then compare it to what Gogol himself was probably thinking and feeling when he wrote this story. So I'm gonna love hearing your comments below about what you think of the hero, Akakiyakakiewicz, about the chenel, about the overcoat, and so on and so forth. So also, fun little facts about this. My favorite Russian author, Vladimir Nabokov, said that uh, this was, this is in fact the best Russian short story of all time. So uh, I think it's definitely worth a read. If somebody as brilliant as Nabokov thought that this was brilliant, then it's definitely worth a read. And again, it's because it's, you know, we, we don't, it leaves us confused about how we feel. I, and that's what I love about Russian literature. It never feeds you answers. It never feeds you answers. You have to try and think about it with your own, with your own insight into it. It never, it never gives you a happy ending. It never tells you what to think about something. So that's possibly why Russians are very analytical and very good critical thinkers, because their literature and their movies does not spoon feed them meaning right? Um, okay, so we're going to start with Google. He's just so delightful. I am actually reading this book right now with one of my private students. This is great. If you guys, oh, let me put my camera on. One second. So, uh, so we're going to be talking about Xinin, and this is real quick before I pull the, this uh, screen off. This is the main character, the Giroi of this short story. His name is Akatya Kakivich. He's kind of a, a homely, unattractive, lonely guy. Uh, he's a low rank in Petersburg society, but he, he's fine with it. He doesn't seem to mind. He likes his life. So we're going to talk about that in detail. So just to get a feel for kind of his frumpiness and his homeliness, I had that picture of him for you. Um, <clears throat> so real quick. So this is the book I'm reading with a student right now. Um, let's see, I'm just trying to get this set up. There we go. So this is the book I'm reading right now. You can find a lot of this guy's stuff on Amazon. His name is Mark, there he is, Mark Pettis, and he is a professor at Yale. He does a lot of these uh, dual-lingual, um, side-by-side Russian with English, 
and then an explanation of the sorry why is that like so wacky and then an explanation of the vocabulary in there um and so yeah I, i'm reading this right now with one of my private students and i think it's really great for russian learners especially you know those of you who feel like you want to be able to read russian literature in the original this is a great starting point. so he has this for chekhov he has this for crime and punishment and again, you can find this guy on Amazon. So we are going to start again. I probably won't even get to everything that I want to say about Chignel because I just love it so much. Look at this. I have probably like 20 pages here. <laughs> so we probably won't be able to be, do like a huge grammar analysis of all of these. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. So part of what I love about Gogol is he's very, he very much breaks the, the fourth wall with his audience meaning the narrator will kind of have a character at all of its own. So for example, look at this. In the department of dot, 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 will actually, right? So that's very goalie. It's like kind of the narrative is kind of having this thought process going on and he writes about it uh, as, he's, as he's narrating. So I, I love that about Gogol. Um, okay, so let's get started. So this is introducing us to our Geroy, our main character, Akakya Kakovich. Akakya Kakievich Bashmachkin. Yeah. So that's a very homely name. It's a very awkward name in Russian. It sounds very pathetic. And sure enough, it fits the guy's, uh, his appearance and personality. So Google starts off. Итак, в одном департаменте служил один чиновник. If you don't know this word and you want to learn Russian literature, you need to learn this word, especially 19th century Russian literature. You got to know the word чиновник. Чиновник нельзя сказать, чтобы он был, чтобы очень замечательный. Okay, so let's start translating this. There we go. So, and so, итак, в одном департаменте, in, in, a, in one uh, the department, служил, served, one such чиновник, clerk. Чиновник is a kind of like a bureaucrat, Again, think government worker, and it's all about rank and stuff. And a chinovnik is very bottom, the bottom rung. Chinovnik nirzia kuzaj, to be ochin zamechatimi. So a clerk, you couldn't say that he's exceptional, that he's excellent, right? So let's do some grammar analysis. We're not going to do grammar analysis on everything because, again, I'm so in love with the story. I printed out so many different things, and we only have an hour max. So. Here we go. В одном департаменте. So we're getting prepositional case because we're in. In the department. In a department. Okay. So the original of these are один. And just in case you didn't know, numbers get cases. Oh, and they're brutal. I'm so sorry. They're so brutal. Uh, один. And then the original of this just doesn't have anything on the end. It's just a mess. Slujil, served, they're served. The original of this is slujit. Slujit, so just got a masculine past tense. Idin chinovnik, one clerk. Chinovnik means So we don't really have any fancy grammar happening here. A clerk that is, you couldn't say, which is like chatin. Again, no fancy grammar. This is getting masculine on this adjective. So zamichatini means like great, exceptional kind of thing, noteworthy. Um, so nilizias, because I you, you couldn't say that he's a great chinovnik. Then we're getting into a really fun description of what he looks like. Again, a homely character. Nizenkava rosta. Nizenkava rosta. So the original of this was niski. And then in Russian, you can do this really fun thing where you make things cute and small. So you're, you're saying this fondly about his shortness. Like, bless his heart. He's very short. So you'd say, nizinki. On takoi nizinki. So same thing with, like, if you were to say something like, uh, to, uh, tolsti. Like, he's fat. But maybe you want to say it in a nice way. On tolstinki takoi. On takoi tolstinki. Right? So you can put a little yanki in there to make it kind of cute and, and uh, like, condescending a little bit. Nizinka varosa. Okay? Look at this ending. This is getting a genitive. Okay. So because you're saying he's of that height, of a short height, of a short height. And the original of this was rost. 
and we're getting Janet because we're saying of a short height. Nisculha ribavat, ribavat. Okay, so this is we got a couple of fun things happening here. One, this is a short form adjective. Okay, so the original of this would be riba. If we wanted to turn this into a full form adjective, we'd go ribavati, ribavati. But we're turning it into a short form adjective. So, and it's masculine, describing a cocky. And what's what I really love here? It's very expressive. We've got another infix happening. This ova. Okay, so when you put an ova in the middle of an adjective in Russian, it makes it into sort of, kind of. Okay, so for a so say somebody wants to say so for example, one of the most common phrases or one of the commonest ways is ways you hear this is the word okay, up here. Um, mala vata, mala vata, like. It's kind of like a nice euphemized way to be like, ah, eh, you didn't, you didn't pay me very much. Oh, thank you. What a boy. Yeah. Well, so yeah, this is so. Pravoslavny mir. Dobry večer. Spasibo vam što prišli. Večerom pjatnicu što vi hotili provoditi svoju pjatnicu sa mnoj. Ja očin karona. Spasibo. So yeah, the original of this. Thank you. And this is perfect that he pointed this out. So the original of this is ribor, right? Now, when we put this infix in here, this ova, it means sort of, okay? So, for example, if we say malavata, or let's look at this one. Dorgavata. Dorgavata. So this is coming from Bali, like not very much. Malavata. Oh, like, hardly, they hardly pay me anything. Like, geez, that's, that's nothing. They hardly gave me or daragavata from daragui, like uh, it's kind of expensive. I don't think I can afford it. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's sort of. So that's super cool in the Russian language. You can put these infixes into the middle of things, and it creates this other meaning. Okay, so riboy means like talked. You know what I mean? Like if somebody has like mm, red spots on their face, or you know acne scars, kind of thing. So. We're picturing Akaki Akakievich. He's short. Um, uh, meaning he's got kind of like acne scars and red patches on his face. Oh, this comes from Riji. In fact, that's a good song we should do. Riji, Riji, Kanapati. Ubil Dietushku Lapati. Riji is not a great thing in, in, uh, in most cultures. In fact, you don't want to be Riji. So he was a little bit redheaded. He was a little bit redheaded. So again, we're using that short form adjective with the infix being kinda, sorta. And then Kimia Yivo Uyula Akaki Akakivit. I just want to show you something super interesting. Imia, for those of you who don't know, that looks like that's gonna be a feminine, right? It looks like that's gonna be a feminine. It's got a ya on it. But guess what? Imia is a neuter. Crazy. There's a whole series of these kinds of nouns that look like they're feminines, but they're actually neuters. So, uh, all right. So we get this is we're picturing a cocky pet, right? He's kind of a homely guy. Uh, yeah, he's just he's a low rank. And then this is really sad, right? So again, because in Petersburg society, looks are everything. Your rank is everything. Money is everything. The way you dress is everything. It makes sense that he's not very important in Petersburg society. So, the department не оказывалось к нему никакого уважения. Сторожа не только не вставали с мест. And then let's go to the next part. Когда он проходил, но даже не глядели на него, как будто бы через приемную пролетела простая уха. Так. So let's go through and translate this word for word. Start anticipating these translations in your mind. So in the department, they didn't show him or they didn't give him a kazivolis, kanimu, towards him. Nikakova, no, no such respect. Uvaženia. Staraja, the guards, like probably that guarded the building, not only 
не вставали с мест. They didn't even, not only did they not get up from their seats, когда он проходил, when he came through, но даже не глядели на него. They didn't even look at him. Как будто бы через приемную пролетела простая муха. Right? As they didn't even look at him as if through the lobby flew just a, a fly. Like he was that insignificant of a person. So I'm not going to go through and translate the grammar here unless somebody wants me to. Uh, but So we're just trying to get a feel for how insignificant and unimportant Akakia Kukovic is. Okay, so, but what's interesting about Akakia Kukovic is he's actually really, really happy. He's really happy, okay? He doesn't, he doesn't care that he, oh, in fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip. This isn't in the correct order in the book, but um, I want I, I want to skip to this part again to kind of illustrate how awkward Akaki Akakievich is. So one second. So here we go. So again, Akaki Akakievich, even though he's he's ugly and awkward, he's really happy. And so he's so happy with his writing, his uh, copying text, that he just doesn't even care about the way he looks. Он не думал вообще о своем платье. Not his dress. Like he wasn't wearing a dress. In this case, it means like his clothing. И всегда и всегда что-нибудь да, прилипало к его вицмундиру. So, uh, something was always stuck to his, his uniform. Like, he just was paying no attention to the way he looked. К, к тому же он умел... Okay, this is a, my a super funny part. К тому же он умел, uh, имел особенное искусство, ходя по улице, поспевать под окно, Именно в то, же, в то самое время, когда из него выбрасывали всякую дрянь. Okay, so we're going to talk about this part. So meaning he had the special art. He had a special gift, right? I would translate this into gift. He had like a special art or a special gift that while he was walking along the street, he always had the ability to just, Paspivai doesn't really translate into English, but it's like just at the right time, go under a window precisely at the exact at the exact time when they were dumping the garbage out of the window, right? So <laughs> this is why he always had stuff stuck to his clothes. So, снякую дрянь. И оттого вечно уносил на своей шляпе арбузные и дыние корки. So, and because of that, he always had, he was always carrying on his clothes bits of garbage, like... Uh, Watermelon and melon rhymes and all sorts of other trash, right? Again, if you want me to translate, if you want me to break down the grammar on these, I can. But these are more I'm just looking to because they're delightful, because they're really illustrating a cocky cocky for you. Um, okay, so as I told you, he's happy. He's a happy guy. Also, let me know in the comments if you have read this book and what your favorite Google произведение is. What's your favorite work of Gogol? Uh, Chanel. Mine is Chanel, easy, in first place. And then I do love Nos. That was another one I wanted to do. Nos, the nose, is a great one. Uh, his most famous work that students learn in school is Nortli Dushi, which is Dead Souls. And there's Patriot, there's Revisor, which is actually a very famous play all throughout the world. The Inspector General, I think is what it's called. Uh, so yeah, he's very famous. He's such a clever author. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what makes, why is Akaki so happy all the time? Мало сказать, он служил ревностно. Нет, он служил с любовью. Там, в этом переписывании, ему виделся какой-то свой разнообразный и приятный мир. So this is what's so cute about Akaki. He doesn't care that he is, uh, that he's awkward and homely and doesn't have friends. No, because he loved his PPC binder, which was he would copy text, right? So he was a scribe, essentially. He loves it so much that he's happy. He loves it. He even goes home after work and continues to do it because he's so happy. So we're going to do the grammar breakdown here. Malas kut. Okay. So it wouldn't be enough to say, it would be an understatement. It would be an understatement to say, on slujil revnasna. 
uh, which means, so we've seen slujil before, right? We just saw that on the other page. Slujit, revnasna means like zealously. He served zealously. Yet, on slujil, s lyubovyu. Look at that, s lyubovyu. We're getting an instrumental. And that's because of the s. Now, what words get this weird u as they get instrumental? Any feminine that ends in a is going to get this ending. Lyubovyu. S lyubovyu. Tak, okay. Tam, yet I'm getting pasty vany. Okay, so we're getting prepositional because of the v. What? So, v. The original of this is et. That's the masculine. Or actually, no, it's uh, Sorry, it's the neuter. Pity piece of funny. Yeah, we're prepositional because in this copying. Как будут online collaborations с носителями языка и других преподавателями? Что вы имеете в виду? Как вы думаете? Когда, о, когда будут? Да, скоро будут, кстати. Вот. Да, у меня даже есть интервью с другим ютубером, и мне просто надо, э, как сказать, э, ну, я должна послать кому-то, чтобы он написал вот субтитры. И да, скоро будет, скоро будет. Просто руки не доходят сейчас, потому что у меня две работы, четверо детей, и очень мало э, свободного времени. Так. Вот, но это хороший вопрос. И, кстати, so speaking of, добрый день, I'm going to put that up on the page. So he says, когда будут онлайн коллаборации? Кстати, носите, если вы когда-нибудь хотите быть, ну, делать со мной видео, я с удовольствием, потому что у меня много сейчас в голове тем, о которых я бы хотела проводить с носителем интервью. То есть не стесняйтесь, пожалуйста. Пожалуйста, пишите мне в имейл, потому что я бы с удовольствием делала с вами коллаборацию. Так что, I also am dreaming of someday having a Russian literature like book club, where we get to do this with natives and they get to tell us, you know, their interpretation of the story. And especially this story, there's such a different interpretation. Всякие добрые Никитич интервью на всякие темы. У меня есть много-много разных тем. Например, как была жизнь а, при Советском Союзе. А, опишите ваше детство, что было, чего не было. Конечно, это все с целью изучения языка. То есть мы должны говорить а, на более простом уровне, но все равно мне всегда очень интересно говорить с носителями, и я всегда стараюсь учить моих студентов завести разговоры с носителями, потому что они все очень стесняются, да, и поэтому я всегда хочу помогать им не стесняться и завести и продол продолжать целый разговор с носителем, даже когда вот этот носитель говорит незнакомые слова, да, вот, вы увидите на следующей неделе, я, я э, сделаю видео как раз об этом. So, I was just saying, I'm going to hope we're doing some videos with native speakers where we talk about different topics. And in my private students, I'm always help, trying to help my private students build confidence so that if they ever meet a Russian in real life, they can have a, a conversation. So, like, one of my students from university, she said she overheard some Russians in the airport. And she was able to, because I had trained them, to go up and be like, ah, извините, вы говорите по-русски. And they were like, да, мы говорим по-русски. And she was able to tell them, ah, вот я изучаю русский в университете. Вы извините, говорите медленно, пожалуйста. And then, of course, they asked her, ah, почему вы хотите учить русский? Like, why do you want to learn Russian? And she said, у меня which means I have Russian ancestors, and then they were able to be like, oh, how interesting, and then she was able to tell them where in Russia her, right, so I'm always trying to get my students prepared for those conversations, so they don't get shy, take advantage of this opportunity, and start talking with the neighbors, so in the future, uh, I will have one less job soon, I still have the four children, but I'll have one less job, uh, and I'm hoping to eventually start a conversation club where I bring together my students who are learning English or learning Russian 
And then some of my Russian viewers who are wanting to learn English. And each week we'll have a topic that we study. So once I get a Patreon page, that'll be available to the Patreon people. And then as well as I would love to someday have a Russian literature or Russian movie uh, conversation group, right? Where we come together, we have a topic, and we all talk about it together. Oh, the baby's awake. So one second. Oh, she's going to be noisy there for a second. Um, okay, хорошо. So let's go back to Google. If that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments below if you want to be part of a literature club or a conversation club, something like that. Oh, baby. What? Okay, хорошо. So, uh, so as we can see from this, he is just, he loves his work. He's so happy. And keep this in mind, because life is really going to change for Akaki. Okay, so when he's doing his copying his letters, it's as if there's as if there's a, an entire diverse and beautiful universe in just in his letters. And it talks to about how he loves, um, he has particularly, he has particular letters that are his favorite. And he loves the way they curl. And he's just in love with the letters of his, of his writing. It's so adorable. Um, and so then he's not paying attention to anything else. He doesn't care about Petersburg pomp. He's just not impressed by any of it. He doesn't care. And so in some ways, I think that, I think that, uh, that, um, oops, what am I talking here? That Google really admires it about him, right? Google really admires how little he cares about this. So let's go to the next one. Okay, so, and I'm just going to read this. I'm not going to dissect it. I'm going to. One shoot to evolve Saki Mig. Okay, so real quick. So in the story, then he. His coat is too worn out. He's got to get a new one. There's just no way around it. The Petersburg winter's too cold. He's got to get a new one. And he's devastated by this because he, he feels like he's poor. And, but he finally decides to do it. And he saves up his money. He works so hard. And he finds so much joy in this. He finds so much joy in saving for this gene, saving for his overcoat, that he feels, gives him purpose and joy in life that he didn't have before. So this is the big question. Is his life better off because of the chine? Is his life better off because of the overcoat? Or is it better off when he was simple and didn't have something that, he, you know, something fancy that he was trying to have in his life? So look at this cute little line. I didn't, I didn't print it out. But it says, when he would, you know, when he would think about the chine, it was like, Look how adorable that is. So when he's thinking of this overcoat, it feels like he has a wife. It feels like a wife to him. It feels like he has a companion, right? And again, how sweet this is. This is like this sweet little awkward guy that for the first time in his life feels like he has somebody by his side, something to hope for and something he's excited about. <clears throat> in fact, there are some people, some people uh, say that, in fact, the overcoat represents his sexuality, <clears throat> right? So his, you know, sexuality, he starts to see the world in a different way, and we'll see that more in a little bit. Okay, so the healer finally finishes his overcoat for him, and the moment has come for him to put this long-awaited overcoat. Let's read it. <laughs> I love this. This is my favorite. <laughs> okay, sorry. So let me translate this for you. So he felt with every passing moment that his children his new overcome. Again, if we're thinking about this, like his love, his woman, his, his introvert. He's just feeling so much. He finally has the coat, and it's finally his. And so sometimes he can't help it, but he smiles from from just inner pleasure. He's so happy. 
Okay, this line is so funny because it's so understated. In fact, there were two advantages of this uh, overcoat. Одно то, что тепло. The one is that it's warm. А другое, что хорошо. It's just so understated. But that's probably what simple little Akakya Kakovich was thinking, right? Because he's just such a simple guy. He's like, oh, I love it. It's warm and it's good. So, so Akakya Kakovich, his life is finished. He finally is now walking around town in this new shade. And sure enough, when he comes into work with this new shade, oh, all of his co-workers, remember they didn't even notice him before. Now they're noticing him. Now they invite him to a party that night and he suddenly feels like, wow, okay, wow, I am an important person. Now, see, this is a big question. Is, was he better off before when he didn't care? Was he better off before when he didn't care if his coworkers noticed him? Was he better off before when he didn't notice anything that was happening around him in St. Petersburg? In fact, this night he goes to visit his, he's, oh, he actually goes out on the town. This is crazy. Before he would just go home and doing his work. So he actually goes to this party his friend is having, and he's feeling so good. And in fact, he starts to notice Petersburg, and he stops in front of a window. Okay. <laughs> this is just very fancy, fancy, funny in Russian. So as he's walking down the street, he walks past a store where, uh, oh, good. So if everybody wants to see it, let's, let's put this little comment on here. Overcoat for civilians and great coat for military. His great church showed his ranking, and that is why he was happy. Great. That's good to know. Interestingly, though, um, Overcoat is typically translated into English as, or shenan is typically uh, translated as overcoat in English. And that's probably just because great coat is not really a word that the average person knows. So typically I've seen this translated, I've seen shenan translated as the overcoat. I've seen it translated as a cloak. Um, I know. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so that's an interesting thing. Yeah, because you would have seen what his rank was. But unfortunately, that is the concept that Speak Russian wrote in the comments. That's a concept that got lost in translation. That's why we read things in the original. So, uh, oh, спасибо, uh, students, спасибо. Вот, okay, теперь, so... So let's, so he looks, he stops at the window and there's a little advertisement, right? And, and the, there's a picture of a woman, a pretty woman. Again, this is not the kind of thing a cop he would have ever even noticed before. He was not paying attention to anything. Who was taking off her boot, her bashma, her shoe, which is funny because his last name is bashmachin, which is based on this type of shoe or boot. Oh, so she was taking off her boot and in so doing was exposing, ooh, exposing in such a way oh, her entire leg, which, by the way, meaning oh, it was a pretty attractive leg she was, a, she was exposing there. So we're seeing Akaki. Again, some people say that the shigel represents sexuality coming, uh, awakening within him. So again, that's up to you how you want to how you want to interpret it. But you see him noticing those things that he never does, he never does before. Suddenly he's interested in women. And in fact, there's a later a part, um, there's later a part in the story where he faces after like a pretty woman for no <laughs> apparent reason, which is not typical Akaki behavior. Okay, so I'm not gonna give away the plot, I'm not gonna tell you, but tragedy befalls Akaki Akakibich. So you have to read the book to find out what is that tragedy. Okay, tragedy befalls Akaki Akakibich, and he dies. Okay, so the big question is, and I always make my students explore this: Was his life better because of the shenet? Okay. 
как вы думаете? Да? So, was his life better because of this chenille, because of this overcoat coming into his life? Or was it worse? Because the overcoat comes into his life and he suddenly starts to notice the world and he feels happy and he goes and tries to hang out with friends. But maybe, that's maybe the Western point of view, right? The Western point of view is like, yeah, why wouldn't you want something beautiful in your life? Why wouldn't you want to have friends and notice the world around you? Well, we have to remember that Popo was an extremely religious person, right? Extremely religious, very religious. And I think, my personal opinion, is that actually he thinks that Akaki was wrong in being so obsessed with the overcoat. And if he had stayed, if he had stayed innocent and just kept working and stayed, stayed happy with simple things, he would have had a better life. I don't know. Maybe you can disagree with me. So that's probably what Gogan thought. But in the West, we think, oh, well, his life was so boring. He got this coat. And then finally, he starts to have all these happy feelings. And he feels so much joy. So it has to be a good thing, right? Anyway, so let's read this one and we'll do some grammar. So, by the way, Akaki Kakibi dies. How he dies, you need to read the story to find out how he dies. So he dies. And then this is like, you know, some uh, what they say about about Akaki Akakievich dying. И Петербург остался без Акаки Акакевича, как будто бы в нем его никогда не было. Исчезло и стрело существо, никем не защищенное, никому не дорогое, ни для кого не интересное. Oh, so this is so sad. Okay, so we're going to do a grammar analysis about this one. And Petersburg was left without Akaki Akakievich. Как будто, as if, в нем, need dots on there, as if in him, нем being Peter, Petersburg, as if in him, Akaki Akakievich had never even existed, as if he had never been there. Так, Ishi's law disappeared, Iskrilis, and was hidden, существо, a creature, Nikem ne zaschichone. Okay, so we have a verbal par uh, 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 participle here. This is an adjective coming from the verb za shishat, meaning to protect. So he was not protected by anyone. Nikamu ne daraguye. He is not valuable or cher or prized or dear to anybody. So again, nobody cared about him. He wasn't valuable to anybody. Ni dakavo ni intiasna. And he wasn't interesting for anybody. Again, so he disappears and he's gone. And Petersburg is still the same, even without him. So let's do a little grammar analysis. I Petersburg astalsia. This comes from the verb astatsa, meaning to remain or to stay. Bez akakiya is genitive endings because bez gets genitive. Bez akakiya akakievicha. Kak buta bivnyom, this is a prepositional, and that's a pronoun. This is the, the prepositional version of un, because Peterburg is an un. Ik nikagda niebola, kak buta bivnyom, ivo nikagda niebola. We've got a genitive case happening here because we have niebola. There was none, none of him, as if there was none of him. Yeah. Ishes lof, this comes from the verb ishes nut. And verbs ending in mut can have very weird past tenses sometimes. So, ish is lo, and we're getting a neuter because of sushistuo. Iskrilis, this is from the verb skritsa. Skritsa sushistuo. Nikiam nizashishonaya. So, when we're getting a participle, we often get instrumental with the person who did that verb, right? So, uh, he was protected by no one. Instrumental. Nobody protected him. He was protected by no one. Nikamu, dative, because something is, is valuable to someone. Nidaragoye. Nidaragoye. So he was valuable to no one. Inyedlakavo, we've got a genitive, because of la. Nyintiasnaya. So, yes, this is all very sad. Um, Okay, what? <clears throat> this is interesting. So comment here over here. We're going to talk about this. And I'm interested in this because he it seems to be Pravoslavny because his name is Moy Pravoslavny Mir. He says, Мне кажется, хотя бы 
ненадолго он побыл счастливым, счастливым с этой щенеей. So, мой православный мир, if he is, in fact, православный, which Ogun was as well, was Orthodox as well, he thinks that, you know, it's good that, that the overcoat came into Akaki's life because at least he was happy for a moment. And that's interesting, but my literature professor in Moscow said, but we have to remember Gogol was very, very religious. And this represented something being so mm, fixated on a material object. And not to mention, if this represents the sexuality, then maybe, you know, again, so Gogol very much believed in depriving himself of pleasure for the most part. So anyway, uh, okay, хорошо, спасибо. Uh, let's see. Okay, what? So uh, we'll continue on. I'm not going to do any more grammar analysis, but I'm just going to read you the last little bit here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we're still going back to the creature. We should go. Перенасившая покорно канцелярские насмешки и без всякого через речь this is one of my hardest words to pronounce the question. Через печальное дело, сошедшее в могилу, но для которого все же так и хотя перед самым концом жизни мелькнул светлый гость в виде шинели. Okay, so this is maybe supporting the idea that Ogil thought that the shinel was a good thing. Because look, so he, he suffered, he suffered humbly all of these you know, all of the mockings and, you know, all of these unfortunate events of life. But just a moment, Svetli Gost, I don't know how I would translate this, but a, a light, you know, a bright, a bright sparkling ghost came into his life. Vid it in the form of Shinkeli. Bringing, like, Mm, filling his world with life, filling his his poor life with meaning and life and light, right? И на которой также потом нестерпимо обрушилось несчастье, как So again, but then more tragedy befell him, befell him. So speak Russian to Google was pretty poor when when he wrote this. Yes, and in fact, that reminds me of a good point. Gogol, I Gogol very much relates to Akakievich. See, this is precisely what Speak Russian is saying. Look at this. So he says he worked in a low position in the government, and in fact, Gogol has a lot of a very interesting opinion about um, about Petersburg society. He's very much an outsider from it, from it, and he's very critical of it. Well, he's very critical of the Russian Empire in general. So, you know, the obsession with wealth and material things, souls, right? That's dead souls comes in. The person goes around buying dead souls so he can make himself look better. So anyway, so knowing that about yoga, that he's against materialism, uh, that he's against pleasure, right? We know that he was not a very, sex he was not a sexual being. Gogol was not a sexual being, as far as we know. Uh, so again, it's hard to know what he thought. And I love this story because it always brings up really great discussions of was the overcoat a good thing or a bad thing. And I highly recommend for those of you who are learning Russian, check out this guy on Amazon. He has really great stuff. He has Chekhov, he has Gogol. Um, and yeah, you can go through and then he breaks, He, you know, you can see that he gives you kind of the vocab, which you're about to read. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Yes, he right in there he gives you like the words that go with it, and he's got the English and the Russian side by side. So I highly recommend all of that. Gogol is uh, other than Nabokov. Um, Gogol is probably my favorite person to read in Russian. Nabokov, my favorite stuff he wrote is in English, but um, so yeah, Gogol is actually probably my favorite all around Rus Russian or Ukrainian. Again, leave in the comments. Do you think he's Ukrainian? Do you think he's Russian? Um, but I hope you liked that. Please check out Gogol. He's just so delightful. It'll bring a smile to your face. And his stuff is so profound and so deep. Ну, блин, спасибо большое всем, что вы пришли в пятницу. Я думала, а никого не будет. Все уже сейчас 
на вечеринка, кажется, вы любители литературы, как и я. Да, Достоевский, он очень... А, вот, да, я знаю вот этот сериал, вот мой православный мир, говорит, рекомендую сериал «Идиот», да, вот там актер, я не знаю, как его зовут, он просто, вот это такая вот, у него такое искусство, такой талант, я знаю вот этот сериал, он такой талантливый актер. Вот. Um, thank you to everyone for coming on a Friday. I'm glad you guys all showed up. And I think we had a great little discussion. Leave your comments below. And again, let me know what you think, if you've read this story or not, what you think of it. And again, спасибо, you showed us to everyone for coming out on a Friday. So, at the show, спасибо вам большое. Увидимся на следующей неделе. До свидания.